Welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Namak APSC. So in today's video, we will be discussing about the functions of an ecosystem. Uh, at the end of the video, uh, if you do have any doubts, please do write to us in the comment section. Okay, so when we talk about the functions of an ecosystem, the any ecosystem that you take will perform four functions. First is the energy flow, which involves the exchange of energy necessary to support life. The second function of an ecosystem is nutrient cycling, which involves cycling of various nutrients between biotic and abiotic components. The third function is ecological succession, which involves ecosystem development. And the fourth function of the ecosystem is homeostasis, which renders stability and feedback control mechanisms when you take any particular ecosystem. So in this particular video, I will actually be discussing energy flow that is the first function of the ecosystem and in successive videos, we will deal with the remaining functions of an ecosystem. Okay. Now, when discussing about energy flow within an ecosystem, I always want you to remember that the energy flow in the ecosystem is always unidirectional, meaning the energy will always flow in a single direction. So, whenever you take any ecosystem, generally the energy will always come from the sun. So, even in this particular video, if you are able to see, the energy is received by the sun. So the plants will take or use, make use of this energy from the sun to produce food. The grasshopper in turn will feed on the plants to produce chemical energy in order to sustain its life. This grasshopper may be fed upon by snakes or frogs. The snakes or frogs may be fed upon by some other birds. So you see that all this energy which is flowing within the ecosystem is always unidirectional and the flow of energy will never take place in the opposite direction. So, in order to understand, to better understand the energy flow in the ecosystem, we will have to consider the trophic level interactions. The trophic level actually refers to the step, place or position occupied by an organism in a nutritive series of an ecosystem. The classification of organisms into different trophic levels will actually depend upon their feeding behavior. So if you look at this particular diagram on your right hand side, you should be able to see these trophic levels. You should be able to see that at the bottommost, uh, at the bottommost level or part of the diagram, you have plants. At the next level, you have herbivores. At the next level, you have the first level carnivores. And after that, you have the second level carnivores. So the position or the place spot which is occupied by these organisms at different levels represents the trophic levels within that nutritive series. So any nutritive series that you take, you have to remember that the producers, the primary producers will always occupy the first level or the bottommost level in any nutritive series or in any trophic levels and therefore starting from the plants you will always have to move to higher levels. So now if there is transfer of energy between these levels, here I want you to understand something. The laws of thermodynamics actually says that whenever you have transfer of energy from one system to another system, the process of transfer of this energy is never 100% efficient and there is always loss of energy usually in, uh, in terms of heat. Therefore, as you move from one trophic level to another, that is from primary producers to herbivores to carnivores, there is always loss of energy and the amount of energy which is available at a higher level is always reduced. This was actually given by this, this uh, concept itself is actually known as the 10% law because generally only about 10% of the total energy from one trophic level is passed to the next as the remainder use as the remainder is actually used in metabolic process. Therefore, it is known as the 10% law by Raymond Lindman. 
Say for example, you consider this particular video, sorry, this uh, image on your right hand side. For example, uh, you do have plants or trees which make up the, which use the energy received from the sun to produce, to produce food. Now, the earth would receive a lot of energy from the sun, but obviously not all that energy would be used. Maybe a lot of energy is reflected back into outer space, a lot of energy may even be wasted. Say for example, the trees and the plants will make use of a lot of energy. They will actually make use of, maybe generally it is always a small amount of energy which will be used by plants to produce food and for its own metabolism, it will further use a lot of energy and even though it receives 10,000 calories, for example, you know it receives a lot of energy, only about 1000 calories may be stored within the plant which will be available for the next trophic level. So, at the next trophic level, a deer or a rabbit which would eat plants, it would only be feeding on plants containing about 1000 calories, where only 1000 calories is now uh, available for this particular rabbit to make use of in order to survive. Now once again this particular rabbit out of those 1000 calories will use a lot of energy for respiration, for metabolism, for reproduction etc etc. So by the time you have the next trophic level that is a snake, out of those 1000 kilocalories only about 100 kilocalories is now remaining for the snake. Again the snake will use a lot of energy for its own survival that is say again for reproduction, for metabolism and by the time an eagle is going to feed on the snake only 10 kilo calories will actually be available for the eagle and this is known as the 10 percent law. So therefore as we move from one trophic level to another trophic level the amount of energy which is available is reduced and therefore it is known as the 10 percent law. So if I say that uh, you always have to consider something known as net primary productivity it is the actually the amount of energy available in primary produces after cell respiration. So it may be net herbivore productivity, it would be net carnivore productivity, whatever it is. So if I say net primary productivity, it is the amount of energy which is available in primary producers after cell respiration. So now if you have understood trophic level interactions, there are three concepts which are involved in trophic level interactions. That is food chain, food web and ecological pyramid. So in this particular video, we will be covering food chain and food web whereas in the following and successive videos, we will be covering up ecological pyramids as well. Now the food chain in an ecosystem actually refers to a linear sequence or progression through which energy or matter in the form of food is transferred from one organism to another. So if you take food chains, generally we should be able to classify these food chains into two types. One is grazing food chain, the other is detritus food chain. The grazing food chain always starts with producers. So if you look at this particular plant over here, sorry, if you look at this particular image over here, this food chain is always starting with plants. Once again, the plant is being eaten by a grasshopper, grasshopper by mice, by a rat, a rat by a snake, a snake by an eagle. And finally, when the eagle dies, its body is decomposed and the nutrients which are made available will once again be used by the plants. But again, you should be able to see that the direction in which the energy flows is always single, it is always unidirectional. So plants in terrestrial ecosystem or phytoplankton in aquatic ecosystem always form the first trophic level in a grazing food chain. Next you have the detritus food chain where the detritus food chain always starts with dead and decaying matter from there it goes up all the way to consumers. So you have here you, have, you may have dead leaves then you may have some other back to some other insects feeding on these dead leaves, these insects being eaten by birds. So this is known as the detritus food chain. So whenever we talk about food chain, the two types of food chains are grazing food chains and detritus food chains. The basic difference between the two chains, that is the grazing food chain and the detritus food chain, is the source of energy at the first level. So in grazing food chain it is primary producers, whereas in detritus food chain the first level is always dead and 
decay matter. But at the same time, I also wanted to understand that even though these are two different food chains, they are actually linked together. The initial source for detritus food chain is nothing but the waste materials and dead organic matter from the grazing food chain. So once again, everything is linked, everything is like a cycle. So this covers up your food chain. Okay, so the next is a food web. Now, a food web is nothing but a network of interconnected food chains which contains all the food chains within a single ecosystem. It actually gives a graphical representation of what eats what within the ecosystem and the dynamics of energy transfer within the ecosystem. So you must be able to see it here. You have a food chain. Now under this particular diagram, you should be able to see three different food chains. But when you integrate the three different food chains, that is when you get a food web. So when you take any ecosystem, you don't have food chains. Rather, you have a very complex network of all the food chains, which is referred to as food web. So whenever you consider a food web, you should always be able to see that the organisms at a higher level always have different options. Say for example, if you look at the food web over here, the rabbit may only feed on carrots, the rat or the grasshopper may only feed on uh, corn for example, the fox may only feed on the rat, the snake may only feed on the frog. But if you take the eagle, the eagle has options. The eagle may feed on a rabbit, the eagle may feed on a fox, a snake or a bird. So always uh, those organisms which occupy the higher levels, even though the amount of energy which becomes available to them by the time the amount of energy is reduced and reaches up to them, they always have more options. Therefore, the chances of survival may also increase because of such options where they are able to feed on a range of organisms. Therefore, we always say that the food web provides more than one alternative for food to most of the organisms in an ecosystem and therefore increases their chances of survival. And for example, in any particular food chain or even a food web, if you remove any particular trophic level, the amount of food that may become available may also further increase. For example, again, if you take the eagle, the fox and the rat, the, fo the fox may eat on rats. So you may have several foxes, the several foxes may eat on several uh, rats. But if you remove the fat, if you remove the fox, then the eagle may feed on rats directly and therefore the number of rats which is available for the eagle to feed on may be even more. Now this is nothing but a, a, a representational diagram It is not that all eagles are able to feed on all foxes but you do have several smaller species of fox on which eagles may also be able to feed on. So I hope you understood the difference between a food chain and a food web. So studying of a food web is actually important because it represents all possible parts of energy flow within an ecosystem. Second, food webs also help us to understand the way species are able to interact with each other directly or indirectly and also food webs can be used to study bottom up or top down control of community structure within an ecosystem. So you may just uh, pause the video here and go through the differences between a food chain and food web for better understanding. Uh, so this is just a question over here uh, for the purpose of revision. So I did mention this particular point. What is net primary productivity? So obviously based on the definition, it has to be option B, the amount of energy which is available in primary producers after cell respiration. It is not before but after cell respiration. Okay, so I hope you uh, had a better understanding of food web and food chain. And the next video will be continuing with ecological pyramids. And if you do have any doubt, please write to us in the comment section. Thank you. Have a great day.